Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna to be checking out a really cool tool called the Flipper Zero. So let's get started. I'm extremely glad that I was actually able to buy one of these because they're constantly sold out. So the way I got lucky was just following their Twitter and as soon as the announcement dropped that it was on sale again, I managed to buy one. So yeah, now I ordered this about a month ago, so it did take a couple of weeks to get here, but I've been having a lot of fun with it for the past week. Now on their website, it does say that this is a multi-tool for geeks. Now for the past week that I've actually been playing around with it, I could chalk this up to more of like a universal remote. So hear me out on this. Say you have a TV, subwoofer, sound system, sound bar, or whatever it is, DVD player, and a bunch of other stuff. You always have like five or six remotes, and then you eventually get one universal remote that will actually be able to use those codes but instead of having five remotes you'll have one this is basically that concept but with anything on a sub gigahertz frequency so you have nfc tags or you have rfid cards to get into a building or gate codes or garage door or basically anything with a sub gigahertz frequency this will be able to read record save and then emulate again so instead of having five different entry points for different cards or rfid readers you just need to carry one device with that concept in mind that's what this can do and more now it does have an infrared reader it also has an i button reader for different types of key cards and it could read a range from sub gigahertz not just 433 or 315 it could read from 900 all the way down for anything that has to do with wireless communication as far as like light switches or uh, ceiling fans or uh, i don't know tv remotes anything you can so this device does it all in one place for the factory firmware that comes with this it is region locked so there are certain frequencies that you are not allowed to read or save or record because it's again region locked there's also a handful of things that you cannot do with this with the factory firmware like save credit cards and then emulate it again anything that has to do with medical devices that's off limits as well but all in all, I have been playing around with this. I was able to get into certain places that use this key cards like gym memberships or even my office. I was able to do certain things uh, just by cloning what I already have. This can also do U2F where it's like a UB key and you need to access some computer that requires like a specific USB to unlock it. This could actually mimic that as well or you could use that as that type of device. Now this device on its own is not malicious. It, it has every intention to be a multi-tool to help you discover new frequencies or help you retain all the information to one area. It's just like saying if you got a chop saw, chop saws are not illegal until you use it to break a lock. So it's basically like that. Now, this device is also open source, which means there are people who have taken this firmware and unlocked a lot of other capabilities with it. One thing I do urge you not to try, even though you can, which is clone the frequency on your key fob. Uh, I've seen many reports where they've tried that, they were able to unlock their cars, but after that one time, their main key fob stopped working. Um, and it only works, I think, that once because you gotta, they have a rolling code and a lot of security. Unless your car's like old, um, the newer security key fobs are not generally something you could just break into. It does need more factors to it. You need the seed or some sort of paraphrase or something like that. But yeah, I've seen people have cases where they tried this, they cloned it, they unlocked their car. Next thing you know, their key fob's not working anymore. So be careful with certain things that you do. Uh, there, uh, I'm not responsible for anything breaking. Neither is Flipper Zero. They're not responsible for anything breaking. It's you use at your own risk. Now let's jump into the desktop. So this is their main website, which is the multi-tool device for geeks. It gives you more information that you need. If you click buy now, you could see that it is waiting to be restocked. So it's sold out already. But yeah, you could go down. They do have an Android or iOS app, so you can actually run this off your iOS. It's basically also like a Tamagotchi. Something I didn't even mention is uh, you could level up the little um, dolphin in the system. So the more codes you copy and use, it levels it up and then it can level up to level two, level three. So you gotta constantly feed it with NFCs or RFIDs and then it'll be happy. It's got a 1.4 inch display, um, orange backlit, with six buttons up, down, left, right, enter in the middle, and then the back button. And also got a status LED which changes different colors. They have green, blue, orange, I think a bunch of colors just to tell you the status of what's going on. Now, uh, it also has an SD card that you can store all your information. So all the stuff that you save can be saved into SD card or the internal storage. 
Uh, you also have the USB for battery charging and also firmware update. And this has something called the bad USB, or if you're familiar with Hack 5's uh, rubber ducky, this can also perform or act as a keyboard or a mouse. Um, you also have an infrared receiver, which we explained earlier. It does have universal remote possibilities, so yeah, you can save your remotes on there as well. And then the GPIOs up in the top. This also does do sub gigahertz transceiver. So if you do have like IoT devices, garage doors, um, stuff like that, you could save this all to your flipper and use it so you don't have to carry multiple key fobs. Going down the list, they talk about the antenna that it's using. It also has the 125 uh, RFID frequency and it does work really well. Um, you can actually use it for doors, um, key cards, stuff like that. And then you have Bluetooth to connect to the app. I don't, I don't think there's anything else with Bluetooth other than connecting it to the app right now, but I'm pretty sure there's probably some firmware update that allows you to use Bluetooth for something else. Uh, you also got the infrared receiver that allows you to use this. Now, in default, it only comes with the TV universal remote, but you can unlock it later to add fans, uh, air conditioning systems, projectors, and a you know, handful of other stuff. Uh, then you got the micro SD card. And since that has GPIOs, you can actually use this with an Arduino and you know have communications and test out stuff. Oh, there's also a I button in the back that I didn't even talk about. It's right over here where if you got another entry or gate entry where you need to use the I button, this can also do that as well. So basically that's the breakout of how it looks and it actually has some good weight to it. Um, it doesn't feel like a toy, but even though it is like a toy, it doesn't, it's heavy. Uh, the power itself, the battery, the 2000 milliamp battery lasts, oh wow, it does say for seven days. I do get that many. I, so far I had it for like two days and it only used like maybe 10%. Surprising enough, it uses a, ARM Cortex M432 bit 64 megahertz, and it does a lot of calculations in this thing. So I'm really surprised that it's able to do that. Now these are the frequencies that uh, your region depends on. I think US is 433 while overseas is 315 or something like that. Don't quote me on that, but there are region locks. If you're in the certain region, say the first time you connect it just to update the firmware, it will tell the region to the device and it'll lock the other region out. So just keep that in mind. Okay, otherwise, that is about it for the main website. Um, I would recommend you checking out some of their uh, shop because this is the Wi-Fi module that I was talking about with the ESP32 that you could connect directly on top of the board right through those GPIO pins. And then you unlock the capabilities of using the ESP32 Wi-Fi. Now, definitely check their forums out because there's a lot of information going on. If you go to tops, uh, top uh, list, you could already see that they have bad USB, uh, Tesla charging ports, a bunch of stuff that uh, people are learning how to use or actively uh, working on this. And since it's open source, there's a lot of people doing tweaks and making it better as we go. So there is this unlocked firmware called Unleash. This will take the factory firmware and unlock without limitations. Basically unlock all the stuff that you're allowed to do or shouldn't be allowed to do um, to the Flipper Zero. And here are all the changes to it. Just like this, Sub-Zero region lock, uh, restriction removed, uh, the range can be extended with certain files. There's a settings file that you could extend the range. Uh, well, extend the protocol, the frequency range. Um, there's a few other stuff. It comes with pre-compiled like scripts that are in there. It adds the universal remotes for projectors, fans, ACs, um, sub gigahertz frequency uh, detection. So there's a frequency analyzer. And if you go down, there's a lot more stuff, like it loads new games in there. There's new types of GPIOs that you can add. So it's not just the Wi-Fi module board. There's other boards that you could add onto. Uh, here we talk about the games and there's a few more other stuff. And then instructions on how to build or how to install. It's all here. There is this Unleash firmware, which a lot of people I think use because it unlocks most of the frequencies that we need to um, learn or, you know, again, this device is not malicious until you deem it to be or you use it to be. So ultimately you can install these firmware, but it's not meant for illegal purposes. I mean, it just allows you to do what you need to. Now on top of this firmware, there's an actual level up to this firmware, which is called the Rogue Master. This actually takes the Unleash firmware and unlocks even more stuff that the, unlock, uh, the Unleash didn't do. So if you go down, it'll actually explain more changes that it did. It added new animations, which 
they are pretty cool because I'm a big Dragon Ball Z fan. So they have a lot of Dragon Ball stuff in there. There's a few more moods in there as well as a few more settings um, that is unlocked. And this also adds features to like holding up and holding down that gives you secondary favorites or primary favorites. Uh, more games, definitely a lot more games. Now, enough of checking out all the firmwares. What's cool is that the Q Flipper software that you install can actually interface with this device and you can update the firmware through here. You also has the ability to back up, restore just in case if you like screwed up something or you could transfer files directly to the SD card or the internal flash. What's cool about this is that you can actually use this to control your device. So if I hit down, it'll actually bring me to the browser and I could just go through all the stuff. And what I recently just added was, uh, let's see, Amiibo DB, which now I have a lot of Amiibo stuff. I don't know how to explain it, but like Legend of Zelda, if I wanted to unlock a horse, I could use the NFC as an Amiibo to unlock the horse. Uh, there's a few more other things that you could do in here. If you click into the center button, uh, here are the applications. You could actually go through here and go through games, miscellaneous. Um, let me see tools and if i needed to do some frequency analyzer you could do it over here you could create passwords on the fly something like i said earlier that i mentioned that i really like was this u2f uh, which you can actually use as your two-factor authentication to plug into a computer to unlock say password generator or password uh, you know, database or something like that but yeah it's really cool i could also use this as um full on remote control so you got the infrared and i could in here select whatever i want i could learn remotes save remotes universal remotes so yeah that is it i'm not going to go through too much of the actual device but it is a very interesting device if you're looking for something for christmas to get for yourself or someone else i would urge you to do your own research there's a lot of videos out there on what this guy can do or what you can do with it so yeah i would definitely do the research on that um, i've been having a lot of fun with it because i'm able to store all the access that i need uh, into this one area you, you're also able to put a pin on it so you can lock the device but yeah if you have any questions you can come hit me up on discord or down in the comments below and if you guys are new to this channel consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out and i say my nerd cave hack till it hurts